I V M. We would like to thank HDFC Life Insurance for supporting this show. HDFC Life Insurance has created an online video series called Behind the Journey with some of the most interesting people from the creative and entertainment industry. It explores the stories that are behind the glitz and glamour of the spotlight and screaming fans. Let's listen into a snippet from the episode featuring actor Jitendra Kumar. Initially, जब जब मैं बहुत ऐसे कुछ चीज नहीं वर्क कर रही एक्टिंग में तो मैं बहुत पैनिक कर जाता था. तो काफी लोग मुझे सलाह देते थे कि नहीं मतलब उतना पैनिक मत कर मतलब धीरे धीरे ग्रो करेंगी चीजें तो जिस तरह से तुम्हारा काम धीरे धीरे ग्रो करता है एक दिन में नहीं चीजें मिलती हैं आई थिंक तुम्हारा जो फाइनेंशियल साइड है उस पर भी तुम्हें ध्यान देना चाहिए और वो भी धीरे धीरे डेवलप होता है वो भी एक दिन में नहीं होता और वो होने लगता है As Jeetu said, steady growth is a good sign for both your finances and the journey of your dreams. You can watch all the episodes of Behind the Journey on HDFC Life Insurance's YouTube channel youtube.com slash HDFC Life. Take control of your personal goals with HDFC Life Insurance's financial solutions. Plan now with HDFC Life Insurance. Terms and conditions apply. HDFC Life Insurance Company Limited, IRDAI, registration number 101. You've tuned into a show called Mr and Mrs Binge Watch and you were expecting a spoiler free episode so there are many many spoilers on this episode kripya dhyan dijiye We are back with a brand new episode of Mr and Mrs Binge Watch this is Mr Binge Watch Anirudh Guha and I'm sitting with Mrs Binge Watch Janice Sequera Yeah and we were reminded of the fact that we are Mr and Mrs pretty recently because we're just back from our anniversary vacation Oh yeah third oh, anniversary yes. guys third we've been together for 8 years and we've completed 3 freaking years of being married wow I don't know what's freakier though 3 years being married or 8 years being together Janice that's I almost know, a decade so. that's a like- Five percent of our entire life. No, it also means eight years of us having lived together, which means we've been adulting pretty hard, huh? Yeah, the last right. Eight years. Yeah. We're very responsible citizens. Now we pay our taxes. We But I cats. think it's weird, right? I mean, given that everything you just said, eight years being together, living together, adulting. Still being married feels like the oddest thing, like the most grown-up thing ever. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Just like, like one ceremony while... that lasted all of forty-five minutes because Janice was showing eyes. to the priest Pandit. who was conducting it and he was a uh, poor guy was like uh, he was he was under so much pressure that he had to wrap up quickly which i'm That's really That's not my biggest grouse with him. Really my for. biggest grouse with him is that he used very low quality kumkum because my brother got an allergy from that so he, that sounds okay, wait, so wait, wait, wait. elitist jealous explain, right now you sound like you're from the upper <laughs> east side full blair world of moment has taken I place mean, please, right now please yeah guys we got married on a vineyard okay like on a vineyard of course i'm going to have a little bit of privilege talking at this point okay itna low quality premium matlab location hai vineyard hai only 75 people have been invited to this we had also thing. hired birds apparently yeah, according to, to fly uh, according over to our, our mandap at the opportune moment where we were announced man and wife because yeah. a flock of about 40 birds just flew over and everybody went gassed and i remember a guy came up to me right after the wedding and said ke super wedding yaar kya organize kiya tha wo birds to super tha jo upar se camera na wo wo janis ne organize kiya tha no but here see here's the problem the pandit made so much money that day okay every freaking person who came to the mandap kept giving the pandit either 500 rupee notes or 2000 rupee notes thank you modi ji because of you that pandit made lot of money because yeah. 2000 rupee notes na yeah. and then he used low quality kumkum I mean, he just put one dot of it on my brother's Janice, forehead, it, and he got an allergy. So much so that it's still a scar on his forehead. It's not right, no. It's freaky that <laughs> three years after us being married, till date, I did not know about your problem with the kumkum used at the wedding. <laughs> it's like I am learning something about you on this no, podcast. No, because he put it on. He put it on Sean, my Janice, brother. Janice, now, second, no, second, I second. don't want to know more about your kumkum issues, man. <laughs> yeah, Moving on. Like so so anyway, 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 They have titles like Kum Kum Bhagya. Yeah, that's so exactly like, what I thought of it. Clearly, you were not Bhagya. <laughs> you, it was not in your Bhagya to get amazing Kum Kum. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, wow. What an amazing analogy. But essentially, Janice and I were away on this most amazing vacation. You know, since I was a little kid, I've heard about the Kerala backwaters. <laughs> like I read about it in geography textbooks, and I saw it in Mani Ratnam films. And I always wondered what it would be like. And it was like it just felt like this whole vacation felt like. कितना एक्सपेक्टेशंस ओवर द इयर्स हैव बीन बिल्ट अप 
and it completely met my expectations it was just freaking amazing and literally this we are recording this episode a day after janice and i have less than 12 hours we 12 hours after we returned which is why it's a great time to make an announcement that you are right mr and mrs binge watch is now mr and mrs travel no because no you're, okay. because you're turning this into a travel no, show okay. uh, janice please random kum kum then travel what are you saying but anyway i'm These saying that i have i tell you they are what make this i show. have never felt this level of post travel blues that i am feeling yeah, right now yeah same matlab kyun yaar we should be eating appam and stew at this time now yeah what? i know right we're going to eat khichdi no we got poha for breakfast <laughs> yeah. today in the morning so sad. i remember i woke up waking up thinking ke yaar aaj appam ka hai yaar appam ke where is my filter coffee Yeah, that I'll make for you, baby. That's yeah. another podcast on this network, by the way. Subtle plug. He's not my friend, but I'm plugging it anyway. Ha, Janas. We don't get money for these subtle plugs. Ke liye. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But Edit before, me, Nikal. Dena. Before, before we left on our vacation, Janas and I watched the new Netflix show Messiah. It's something that we spoke about in our earlier episode as well. In fact, it was one of the shows that landed on Jan first, twenty twenty. So it's probably one of the newest shows of the new decade. Hmm. And um, you know, we'd love the trailer. uh of uh, you know it it had this really intriguing sort of a story it had michelle monahan in the trailer playing an uh, a cia officer who is basically investigating the appearance of a man uh, who seems to be the second coming uh, of sorts right he seems to be like a prophet or a messiah or whatever you want to call it yeah. uh and what the trailer the reason the trailer seemed interesting is that it also had a thriller sort of a treatment to it which uh, which is what we realize when we watch the show so essentially just to break it down it's about the um, the appearance of this this messiah in in a in a middle eastern country which is clearly dealing with the syrian conflict um and from there the show goes on to his reappearance years later where he basically uh takes uh, a bunch of uh, syrians across to the israel palestine israel border uh to the west bank essentially uh and it's an event that you know because because palestinian refugees have just turned up at the israeli border it turns into this sort of global it 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 gets a lot of global attention from news channels and stuff like that the cia of course is intrigued and wants to know what's happening uh in israel there's a mozad agent uh you know who's now sent in to figure out who the messiah is mm. and to basically uncover him to be a fraud so essentially all across you see the ripples of this one action undertake uh, you know take place all over the world including uh, a small town in texas where uh, you know a priest who's you know facing a uh, uh, you know a crisis, a, a, of faith. a crisis of faith of belief suddenly gets interested in the life of this one man who's turned up from nowhere and i think what the show is trying to play at is the fact that we are living in a world currently where there is so much uncertainty there's so much strife mm. uh, you know there's crisis in every part of the world and the crisis differs from region to region yeah it's almost like the entire world right now needs something to believe in needs saving needs saving and needs like we've never needed belief or faith more than before and at least that's what the show is trying to say so when the this character turns up it means that one of two things is happening mm. either he is an imposter who is basically trying to take advantage of the poor you know sort of state of the world or he's the real thing and he's been sent to save the world and i think that what makes the show interesting is that it constantly keeps playing with these two elements uh, and as an audience you're constantly wondering what's going to happen right yeah i mean you know it's almost like um, you know we even people who are religious you believe in god you believe that you know god has certain miraculous powers to change your your future your narrative the world's future but what if god really came to earth right and decided to live among us and be among us would you believe that he or she is god mm. and that is the question from the first episode you're thrown into like i am such a non believer i don't believe in any form of religion i don't pray to any god right for me the entire i kept waiting because obviously there's a cia angle and you know that from the first few minutes of the show i kept waiting for him to be revealed as a fraudulent imposter Mm. Right, and my entire like I'm saying, I'm, different people might have different perspectives on this show, but my entire perspective was like, "Iska bhanda kab footega?" Yeah, like it's interesting what you said because I had the opposite response. Huh? I kept like every time they got close to 
uncovering the fact that he may be an imposter i felt like i wished that they would you know they would fall flat on their faces which is i think the emotion that they're trying to play yeah, at right throughout. i mean to me michelle Mon- monahan's character besides the fact that of course that she's a ci and she's investigating she to me felt like the audience she's our detective our person in there who's going to find out whether he really is the messiah is he really the second coming of christ because um, you know the messiah's character mehdi debi's character is completely based on jesus christ i mean there have been long there are parallels with there jesus christ there are long op-eds now that have been written about about it it's also i think the number one problem most critics have had with the show right that you're trying to portray it in a certain way but then you're not fully committing to it either so for but ex- i think that's where they are i mean see so so you're right what you're saying the reason they're not fully committing to it is that fully committing to it will take out the intrigue and the surprise no so you might not know second season mein kya hoga na what if he's the antichrist no but more than that i think like while watching the show funnily even though thematically there are so many differences between the two the show that i got most there are two shows that i got reminded of yeah. one was homeland of course all right yeah. because i think homeland also played with that entire intrigue factor that when brody came back they presented him as a hero hmm. a war hero who's returned but at the same time they created doubts about the fact that he may have been turned and un- unless you watch the entire season of homeland or you know you watch successive seasons of homeland Uh, is only when you get the full picture of what really happened. Correct. Uh, and even in that show, just like you know, Michelle Monaghan's character here, Carrie was the correct. only one so, who, from first episode, was like, "There's something wrong with so this." So Michelle guy. Monaghan is. So I think that they are trying to replicate their entire Homeland template. I'm yeah. not saying it's the same show, but because his origins are from the Middle East, see, I also found it interesting that he's a Jewish character, like you said earlier. uh there are several parallels with jesus christ uh and you know for example he's jewish and for example he walks on water at one point on the show or the he's fact able to, you know, or the fact that there's a christian people. he's cure people and the fact that there's a christian priest a very prominent character the guy from texas who becomes his most ardent follower actually uh, for me just sorry to interrupt you but my most uh, the most symbolic scene to me in the entire show more than the walking on water was you know when in texas they hit by a tornado yeah. and everything else around them crumbles but the church stands yeah. that you know i think until that point they were playing with the christianity factor but when they They allowed the church to stand because right before that, a few scenes earlier, you're showing that the priest is having a crisis of faith. He's thinking about burning down the church he's built, and then that church is the only thing that's stood. But that's what I like about the show. I think that's also what what exactly what most critics have not liked about the show. And by the way, the show has a very low Rotten Tomatoes rating, yeah, but a very but a very high IMDb rating, which 7.9. means audiences love the show. And what i like about the show is that they un- they uncover certain parts of the story very organically so it starts off in the middle east you don't know who this guy is you think he is you know he's i thought for example he was a muslim character then you reveal to the audience that you know in fact when he's being interrogated by the israeli character he's being is interrogated as a as an syrian mm. uh, as a palestinian but by the end of that episode you realize that he is actually jewish mm. and then they obviously draw parallels with the entire christian christianity aspect of it so i feel that they have opened those cards you know uh, at very organically just going back to the earlier thing the two shows that i mentioned that and that church sequence that you spoke about felt straight out of leftovers yeah yeah you know leftovers again was a show that was based on a biblical act uh the where rapture. the rapture where the world's you know a percentage of the world's population just vanished overnight only the good have been only the good have been taken and the bad have been left to yeah, survive and, and and you know it's it was of course that was a drama about how people were dealing with the loss of their closed ones who yeah. had been taken away uh and that show again even though based on a biblical act and a drama you know sort of flirted with thrilling elements from time to time hmm. but there was also that supernatural that thread of supernatural running through it there was always it. a thread of supernatural so i feel messiah is homeland with a with a leftovers kind of a supernatural twist That's because an interesting uh, way to put it. yeah because i mean uh, because because uh, they have like i said even though they followed the homeland template it's still so different because because there the question that the audience felt was was brody turned or not yeah. here the question is is the messiah real or not yeah. and really frankly i think they've done a really good job of it because 
every few episodes the plot twisted you know Correct. i mean every few episodes the story turned and you kept questioning whether he really is the messiah or not yeah yeah and any audience watching the show will start on a note of disbelief or rather uh, not disbelief but no belief in the sense not believing in the messiah being the messiah and just being because because you just keep thinking that he is trying he's pulling this huge act no, and, and of course the 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 show also constantly reminds us that don't believe that he is the messiah because every time you start to feel like oh no 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 maybe he really is the messiah they will the cia or the israeli uh, officer the mossad det- detective who's sort of working along with the cia they will pull something out of their hat to show you no listen he could be an imposter he grew up with a magician uncle who taught them a lot of tricks yeah. he's had a history of mental illness yeah. he's actually been in like you know mental hospital uh, asylum for a bunch of uh, months because he you know had the what the god complex the mm, megalomaniac mm, god complex mm, mm. then of course as a character who you never re- who you only see for one scene actually Oscar Wallace who's given prominence throughout the show as the guy who like the messiah also wanted to change the entire world and change the system in a sinister way in a sinister way he is in fact on the uh, CIA's most wanted list Correct. and he's living he's, in Russia He's living in Russia. Because of course, every American show must have a <laughs> now, Russian theme to it. Now, now, when Homeland came out, it was all about the about Iraq and Afghanistan. So, and that, but they do all of that over here also. So, Messiah, actually, I feel that the reason again, another reason I feel the critics have not liked the show is that Messiah is basically using all the tropes Haan. that we've seen over several shows, over, the best shows over the past. Three, four, five years, maybe even longer. Hmm. But I don't feel that necessarily makes it a bad show. I think it makes it work. It makes a lot of those things work. I think the way the show would have been uh, conceptualized is that they wanted to play with the aspect of faith hmm. as the underlying factor. But how do you make that one line plot to, and turn it into something more palatable and binge worthy? And you do it by taking you know all these various routes. like the homeland route for example because you know you are you don't know while you're watching the show if this is a show about faith or whether it's really just a terrorist plot in place and whether in season 2 it's just going to turn into a 24 or a homeland kind of a thriller you know here's a conspiracy an, thriller here's another element to that right if they do decide to take the supernatural route uh, they have also incepted enough ideas in the first season that even if he is the messiah they've constantly hinted at a negative space right i mean the whole idea of bringing in a character like oscar wallace and his conversation with the cia agent with michelle monahan is if you think i am the threat then you have no idea what threat you have in store with yeah. this guy with payam golshari his eventually his real character with the messiah's real name in the show is payam golshari so oscar again oscar wallace is hinting at the fact yeah. that you have no idea what you what you what you're the in biggest store. of the he's, he's the, the big biggest o- like he's like abu nazir of homeland in a sense correct and then they've also built up certain other characters for me which never hit home i mean i felt like you know there's a character of ruth he keeps saying you know i've come back for you then there's ruth a character of the priest's daughter the priest's daughter then there is the character of jibril the boy who follows him into the desert who of course you know is also then looked at as a messiah in the palestine region but i'm saying they've done a lot there are a lo- lot of by the way if you're keeping track of the show you have to know that there are lots of characters and all of the characters have subplots which to me after five point felt a little exhausting i remember we discussed it even when we were watching the show ki itna subplotting pe subplotting kyu hai yeah but see subplotting is only a problem if it doesn't come together nicely so i think what happened with us uh, and what i like about the messiah is that it opens on a intriguing note all right where you are like where you introduced to this character and you think that okay fine this guy is some sort of an imposter now you're invested in the show to far, to find out how he's doing what he's doing hmm. same thing with homeland they at the end of the first episode they revealed that brody has a sinister plan but now you want to know what it is correct then the show kept getting interesting because his popularity kept on growing <laughs> and he kept doing things hmm. the messiah character kept doing things which would turn non believers into believers so now as the audience you were like okay now i am like even more intrigued because i was sure he is an imposter but he is now doing things now my belief is starting to shake so as an audience you are reacting like the other characters on the show and by the midpoint mark which is when he eventually walks on water 
to an audience of millions of people who You're are hooked. also watching it. You're like, damn, this guy is a real thing. Right. And then they break that in the next episode itself, where it is revealed that he was actually adopted by a man who taught him His some uncle. of the most. Best magic tricks uh, mm-hmm. anyone could pull off, and you're like, okay, hold on now. So was that a magic trick? So I'm saying that the show constantly it makes you believe something, then it breaks it the next episode, then it again makes you believe it. And what happened in the process of doing that is that the episodes, by the time we got to the end of the show, eighth and ninth, we felt was lagging in in comparison. It felt right? a little repetitive and maybe also a little bit like, come on, can you also hurry up pointless? A little? Like because what you said about those certain characters, suddenly they stopped making sense. But I have to say that eventually it came together nicely in the finale. Correct, and I think you know over a period of time. I mean, also when you watch enough TV shows, you have to be forgiving in the first season to a large extent because it is the setup. You are now introducing these characters who will hopefully in two and three and four season two and three and four go on to play pivotal roles. So sometimes I think you just have to give the makers that and the writers that kind of leeway. Ki okay, even if you're leaving this person's track a little bit vague or incomplete, it's okay as long as you bring it together in season two. Yeah, I yeah. mean. And- I think you've heard Ani say it multiple times on this show that season two is really the test of any series. Yeah, always judge a show by its second season. Hi, Sacred Games. Um, sorry, just had to do that. You because, do it every single time. Yeah, you have this because to me it is the like. I mean, it's like imagine if Delhi crime un- like completely falls flat in season two, but I will be heartbroken. Yeah, but I don't know if that's the same example because Delhi crime is an anthology series, right? I get it, but I'm saying okay, you're right. It's not the same, but let's say for example, which but show? it's the same character. Family Man, for example, example. What if it falls flat in season two? You are only thinking of Indian examples right now. Because I said sacred. But there games, have no? been certain shows, which even American shows, like Tyrant, created by the same creator, had such a great season one, had a really decent season two also, but then season three sucked. Yeah, because it was like now you are just getting greedy. You just want to capitalize on that same idea. Yeah, that happens with a lot of great shows. Uh, what is good about the Messiah is the fact that I would say that at the end of having watched season one, firstly. Irrespective of whether you think it's a great show or not, the one thing about the Messiah is that it's extremely binge worthy. Right. Uh, you know, it just you know it's like the perfect Netflix show which keeps you wanting to move to the next episode at the end of every uh you know episode. And the other thing that I really like about the show is that whatever defects or problems it had during the course of the season, they do tend to address them or rectify them by the time the season ends. Mm. And most importantly, like you said earlier, they have done enough in season one to make you want to watch season two when it comes out. Yeah, and I feel like whether you take a thriller route, whether you take a biblical route, whether you take a supernatural route, all of it. Will land because you've left enough space for all yeah, three yeah. to happen. Yeah, and I think that that's that says a lot about a show. Any show that makes you want it to return for another season, I feel has done its job. Yeah, and that's what I feel about Messiah. I definitely think it's a show that if you haven't seen yet, you can binge over the weekend. All right, let's talk about our scene stealer of the week. For me, without a doubt, of course, it's Mehdi Debi. Uh, Payam Golshiri on the show, the Messiah, the man who's sort of representing everything from Jesus to I don't know which are the Middle Eastern godly characters there are, who's also very strangely hot. Like it's like height, thoda problem hai, but uh, very easy on the eyes. Yeah, I think Mehdi Devi easily is the scene stealer of the week and scene stealer in the true sense of the term because on the new day of the new year lands a such a big Netflix show and you have this one actor. Uh, you know who gets to be at the center of it, right? And in terms of screen time, he may have lesser screen time than say a Michelle Monaghan because you're supposed to maintain that aura around him. But the more you watch the show, the more he gets to do on it. Uh, and I think it's like a dream role for Mehdi Debi. Yeah. Also, you needed a guy who looks and radiates enigmatism at its very core. So it must have. I mean, it's a huge. Like you said, you thought he looks like hot Jesus, you said. I mean, the fact that he has such a striking personality is so integral to his casting on the show. I also think that he has so many scenes where he's not saying anything, like scenes with other characters who are doing all the talking. And yet... His silence sort of, you know, he still is the main person in the room because you feel like, like, the, I, I've, they've, they've, even Michelle Monaghan being this other biggish actor, I feel like in none of her scenes was she able to sort of steer the importance 
or the impact away from Mehdi Devi. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, uh, I mean, yeah, Mehdi Devi definitely is the scene stealer of the week because a he is a new actor. Uh, newish actor. New-ish. He's done stuff before, but it's the first time he's got the titular role on such a big show. No, and I'm saying also he's been training in theater and art since the age of 13. So this is like someone I mean, checked out his Wikipedia. I page. have checked out his Wikipedia page. I've also seen many of the fan groups. Uh, but you know, training but, but, since the I age mean, of 13, think, uh, it makes sense. You need a really solid actor to carry a show like this on your shoulders. Yeah, you? yeah. I think so, it's a real well breakout done. role. Yeah. Uh, moving on to the wow moment on the show. Now, the wow moment is something I referred to earlier where I spoke about how he lands, he he ends up walking on water. But the reason it's the wow moment is also uh, uh, because due to how it's been built up. Yeah. So, essentially, uh, you know, long story short, he at some point lands up in Texas where he begins to live on the uh, on the property that the priest essentially in the same town where that that massive tornado arrived that Janice spoke about earlier and where the church was the only surviving structure and he begins to stay there um, and people just start flocking to the area from all over the country because they want a sense of who the Messiah is yeah. and so people have come from all over the country you know the whole place has turned into this one hippie zone where everybody is just like chanting mantras and waiting for this guy to show up so that you know he could bless them and he just at one point gets into a car with the priest and begins to drive away from texas and what that does is that all the people on the property begin to get into cars bikes and start following him following him uh essentially cops are following him because they are curious to know they can't arrest him because he's not done anything wrong but the law enforcement agencies like the CIA, FBI and the police have their eyes on him. And it's a very wild, wild country kind of a moment where he's this, uh, you know, priest that these huge group of Americans are following and, you know, there's this whole caravan driving through the United States and you don't know where it's going to land up. And he basically takes them to Washington, D.C. And of course, the minute he arrives at the Capitol, everyone's like, oh my God, is this a terrorism? Matter? Correct. Is there going to be a terrorist strike? What's going to happen? So everyone's on it's, high It's alert. basically a guy who has been presented as being fishy and probably linked to a terrorist organization because that's how Americans see anybody who is, you know, slightly out of the ordinary. Yeah. Having taken millions of Americans to one spot in Washington, D.C., which is a huge security threat. And essentially what he then does is that he begins to walk on the water, you know, in front of the uh, the Lincoln the Memorial. Lincoln Memorial yeah. uh, and that's a great moment because, I mean, again, it's a it's a location that you've seen in so many films and shows over the years. If so I'm not it, wrong, that's also where the presidents do their first speech right after they're elected. Possibly. I so, mean, not something I'm aware no, of. No, no, I think that's the reason why it's so imprinted in our memory because, you know, election after election, especially the American election. The Washington seen Memorial, uh, you know, it's overlooking the Washington Memorial and it's essentially a tourist spot where there are several eyes and it's like the whole world's eyes are on him because you know the press is following him there are people with cell phones there are you know vlogs being being uh, being recorded there and, are photographers who are standing at the and, cusp of history and it's the first time he speaks to them and you don't know who he is what he's going to do next and then he just begins to walk on water and I think it's an extremely goosebumpy moment uh, and easily the wow moment of the show. Yeah. All right. So where does this show fall on our binge meter Well, according to us, it's like uh, a great appam being served with lots of chutneys, different kinds of chutneys. So at the resort where we were, they would make appams every morning for breakfast. And along with that, we would get a minimum of five to six kind of chutneys. Some chutneys we would love, like the coriander chutney and the coconut <laughs> chutney. What are you saying? But some chutneys were like pineapple chutney, just like, why? Why are you on my platter? And Misa- that's how you felt about yeah. Miss. So I have waited is, for the last 30 seconds for you to make that correct. So, Messiah is just like that. The Messiah is like a great appam. Some of the characters around him are wow. Some of them are like, Tu kyu hai show pe? Matre. 
Yeah, all this, all the last one minute has made me do is miss Kerala even more yeah. and miss the upper men stew. But unfortunately, that will just remain a dream for a few more months now till we go back to Kerala. However, if you like this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IBM network. You can listen to us on the IBM podcast app or ibmpodcast.com. You can also follow us on our social media. We are at IBM podcast on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want to reach out to either Janice or me, Janice is at JaniceSec85 on Twitter and Instagram. And I am at Anikoha on Twitter and Instagram. On that very sad note, please cue ye kya hua. And please tune in next week also to Mr. and Mrs. Binge Watch, where we promise to be happier and choppier and, and more excited. And less sad. And less sad and less having come blue, back from, less a, blue. from the best vacation ever. Okay, bye. Bye. I hope you enjoyed that show. We'd like to thank our sponsors on the network this week. Thank you, HDSC Live, for coming on board. Also, would like to thank Storytel for continuing the long-time advertising that they've been doing with us. And if you have a brand and you'd like to advertise with us, please send us an email. We'd love to talk to you. And let me tell you a couple of things that you should check out this week. On Top Retails, Madhuri tells the story of Manjula Taylor, who stitches buttons on each piece of clothing as she paves her way as a working mother. On the Pragati Podcast, Amal Agarwal gives Pawan a tour of the rise of modern banking in India. On Edges and Sledges, there's a bonus episode out where DJ Ashwin and Varun have a special guest on, Craig McMillan, former New Zealand cricketer. On Paisa Vesa, Anupam is joined by Avinash Luthria, a SEBI-registered investment advisor, to talk about five common misconceptions around investing. On Pulia Bazi, hosts Saurabh and Pranay discuss the randomized control trials that led to the Economics Nobel Prize. Thanks and keep listening. Do you wish you were smarter? Well, so do we. But the next best thing? We could make you sound smarter. And to help you with this endeavor, we are Simplified. Ooh. A podcast uh, that attempts to break down the complex world around you with a uh, little knowledge, a lot of poor jokes and a ton of random trivia. Episodes out every Monday. On the IVM podcast app or wherever you get your podcasts. See ya! See ya.